Welcome to Samudra Shakti Online. I'm glad you're with us tonight. Samudra Shakti Online is brought to you by a volunteer planning committee in the United States. It's Maduri Martin, who's out west in the Colorado Rocky Mountains, and myself, Lisa Long, who's along the east coast of the United States in Florida. We have an agenda that we'll move through tonight. I'll we'll give you a little bit of background about Samudra Shakti Online. We'll have our presentation from Julia Pering. We'll probably have time to have a survey um, that we'll ask you to complete. It's online. And maybe we'll have time for discussion. It depends on uh, Julia's presentation. Samudra Shakti Online originated out of a live event in the Colorado Rocky Mountains in 2019. The Shakti was so amazing as the Anasara licensed teachers gathered that we wanted to continue this connection, collaboration, and community involvement. And Samudra Shakti Online was born. And we didn't know that there would be a pandemic and that we would be doing this once a month through the pandemic, but here we are continuing on. I have some big news to let you know about too. Eight women co-created a PDF that is free that you can get. So if you love continuing education, this is a document that you want to have in your hands. Julia Perring was one of the contributors, as well as Christina Sell, Tiffany Wood, Kat McCarthy, Judith Hill, Maduri Martin, Deb Payne, and myself. And we created it especially for you. It is called Heart-Centered Tips for Evolving Approach. It has um, magazine quality articles in it from each of the teachers to help you evolve how you're approaching your practice, both on the mat and off the yoga mat. And to receive it, you just join the Samudra Shakti live event watch list. So we'll be returning to the Colorado Rocky Mountains in September 2023, September 17th through the 20th. So if you've never used a QR code before, you just hold your phone up and you turn on your camera as if you're going to take a picture. It'll grab the QR code and ask you if you want to open a web browser and just say yes. It's going to a safe page that allows you to just type in your information and automatically you will get onto the watch list and we'll send you more exclusive free content once a month until our live event in September. So you'll be getting lots of amazing articles and videos. As well, you'll get that free 32 page magazine quality guide called Heart Center Tips for Evolving Approach. I'd also like to announce, this is you guys are getting all the big news tonight, um, our teaching team for Samudra Shakti 2023. This is everybody who's gonna be teaching in the Colorado Rocky Mountains next September. It's Kat McCarthy, Chaya Spencer, Christina Sell, Christine Dufresne, Christy McKenzie, Deb Payne, Denise Stotman, Jacqueline Prate, Jay Martin, Jeannie Manchester, Judith Hill, Julia Paring, who's our presenter tonight. I'll be there, Maduri Martin will be there. Nolene Tyrell, Rachel Dewan, Rachel Bush, Suzanne Zuber, Tiffany Wood, and Will Duran. So that's a pretty amazing lineup that um, we've been working hard to bring that together for you. So once again, we hope you'll join us September 2023, live and in person for Samudra Shakti, the live event. So tonight you're here for Julia Pering. She is an amazing teacher. She's been teaching, uh, I don't know, Julia, how many years have you been teaching? <laughs> Open your mic, darling. It's 2008. 2008. Is that only 15 years? That's 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. Mm -hmm. She's considered an experienced certified Anasara teacher. She leads teacher trainings, workshops, retreats. She's based in New York City. She um, had a sequence of life-changing events that ignited her passion for the grace principles of yoga and how Anasara yoga brings them into being through the universal principles of alignment. As she's continued her studies, she's wanted to know more and more how the UPAs or the universal principles of alignment work. And it led her to many advanced studies inside 
and outside of the Anasar community, including extensive anatomy, kinesthesiology, and physiology training, even cadaver dissections. In the past 10 years, she's built a thriving therapeutic yoga practice and acts as the managing director of the World Yoga Center. It's an Anasara Yoga affiliate school that has been in New York City for the past 50 years. So there's much more that I can share about Julia this evening in her bio, but I would really love to just hand it over to you. She's nodding her head. So I'm going to stop the share. And Julia, welcome. Thank you. It's really, really lovely to be here. All right. Welcome. I'm so glad you all are here. Thank you for being here. Um, creating invaluable feedback through props. Something I've always thought about, something I've always loved is props. And then I found particularly doing, during the pandemic, being unable to be with people to adjust and assist them, that it became even that much more important to try to get across um, what it was that we were wanting to, to um, bring into to, into the body. So that is how this particular topic arose in, in my interest to present with you all tonight. Um, and, and it really starts with that question, like to prop or not to prop. So, you know, part of the reason or over the years, I've heard so many reasons for prop, so many reasons not to prop. And, you know, if you take a pic look at this picture, like, like now we can understand maybe why not to prop. Like we're, we're not actually looking for just a stick or something that's going to hold us up so we can collapse or, you know, lean. Um, although if we, if we get just that little bit, bit of boost and support, what we find is then we can start to actually create the support we need within our own bodies. So as much as this, you know, this, this house, it's like, also it needs that prop right to even have any chance of staying upright. So overall, we are big believers in props um, in the Anasara yoga practice. And, and that's the, the reason why is because it's, it's like, let's just do more than prop, right? It's not, it's, it's more than that. Um, and so even my goal was to use some of the lens of our Anasara yoga philosophy and the methodology of particularly the UPAs to investigate how props help us, right? And particularly just to begin, so they help provide boundaries, endpoints, and feedback. Um, this is just my blurb. This is what came up when I first thought of it. And now it's in a, a spread, you know, it's in this, this kind of presentation. So it, they probably, it does a lot more than this, right? But the, this is what I've been finding really fascinating recently, boundaries, endpoints, and, and just then overall feedback. So <clears throat> we're going to, let's see if we get to this one tonight um, in this picture here. Um, which is both giving a boundary, right? It's saying this is the the uh, um, the uh, the edge of things, right? You can't get the heel any lower, and so everything has to accommodate that. It is also very. It's at the heel. It is at the end point of one of our limbs, and the feedback is delicious, delightful, always informative. So. Just even to get into it, you know, the physical body, like what are what are we talking about, right? We we're talking about light bound in form, right? There's it's it's just this is what it is. There's why we have boundaries, why we have endpoints, you know, all of this is is that relational quality with that that which is around us and ultimately that which is within us. Um, so so much of what we invite and encourage is to know the light within, right? To know even the, the beauty of being bound in form, that choice of light being bound in form. So that's, that's what we're working with in our asana practice and our physical practice. And props become really, really helpful. Um, boundaries. So even this word bound, you know, to be bound, oftentimes we use props um, to uh, provide or even enforce boundaries, right? To make sure that containment remains there. Um, and this is a picture of a water balloon that now with these high speed cameras, they were able to capture it. Like the second it, the, the containment of the, the plastic of the balloon was popped. And what you're seeing is then a, that what was in that contained space water Right. And it has a power. It has a shape. It has a force to it. Right. Our, the beauty of having a healthy boundary 
is, is actually then it, it gains in force, it gains in power, it's enlivened by having that boundary. Um, and then when it bursts, right, then, then the boundary is lost, the energy expands beyond that boundary, and it becomes something else. But the beauty of being bound, right, we'll see how we make use of props in order to help contain. So healthy boundaries. Um, so we get to boundaries, then we get to endpoints. So props help us with boundaries and endpoints. So endpoints, particularly, right, fingers, toes, even head, we've got different spots we like to put props um, crown of the head, back of the head, you can do a chin, you know, there's lots of spaces to, to make use of. The seat, right, the, as if the tail and the base of the seat is also an endpoint. And endpoints also give us so much because of their use as a place of exchange. This pic is just a picture of a river delta, you know, a, a place in which something that was contained in, in a river Right, the water that was contained in a river meets then a larger body. And what happens at places of exchange, um, you know, even technically, they often call use the word diffusion. Um, and diffusion basically means being able to um, even it over a longer space, even it out, right? It's, it's this, um, this place of, of, of movement and balance that actually doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, and, and so the way that we use props, particularly under our hands, you know, in relationship to our feet, under our seat, all of these places, they, they really bring then in the body this dynamic play that we love so much in the Anasara um, uh, methodology of the UPAs. And ultimately, all of this brings us to what is thriving through feedback. Um, you know, our openness to um, feel what is right outside of ourselves, right? To be in relationship, because then we can make little course corrections. Um, you know, we have such a desire for that interaction because of how it allows us to even know our own self, right? It turns us in on ourself. Um, and the strength that comes from being responsive. Um, so here is just, you, you know, you can almost imagine the way that those two hands are meeting each other and connecting and the, 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 the joy that, that, that gains. And, and, and ultimately then a stability, a boundary and containment. And then it's just nice to see, I mean, this is just life in general, right? So this, these pictures just reminded me of each other, but these are just mangrove trees who are also in there, you know, finding each other, you know, wanting feedback, wanting to know what's at the boundary of their the, themselves, you know, what is in that space. Because of what we know, you know, we're light bound, right, into the form, but we know the the formlessness, right? We know, we know ultimately the uh, that which goes beyond the form as well. So we have the use of props as well to connect us into something that's like, oh yeah, it's not just empty space. But the way that props also give us a way to um, connect, know the interconnection that we have. Um, and it invites us to use our sensitivity. Um, so these are just the way, this picture is just the way that light catches, you know, the hairs that are like the beard, it must be the beard like of, the, of a zebra. And, um, you know, so particularly this is the sensation of touch, the way that hair is, hairs are used to, um, to be aware of, right? And, and we, we want that deep sensitivity for ourselves because it turns us towards ourself. It, that's the beauty of the methodology. So we can talk about the philosophy, right? The, the light bound form, um, but also in the methodology. And then how do we use that in the principles, you know, particularly through the pulsation between muscle and organic energy, you know, from the outward to the inward, to the outward, to the inward, the, the way in which we, we make, make use of this sensitivity to um, be in touch with not only the depth of our own heart, but then that which is all around us. So here's, um, you know, so self-awareness becomes really key. It's, 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 um, part of what we want that feedback for because of we want to know the heart. And here's three words, and I, I don't necessarily want to go into so much about them, but, you know, the touch that we just saw on the, 
Um, and particularly a lot of what we're using with props, right, has to do with touch. And that's one of, say, exteroception, along with, you know, sensing, smelling, um, all of those, the five senses, the way that we orient and we know ourselves in the world by those. Interoception is more how we know by movement inside of ourselves or heat or temperature or other ways. And it's also very key. And, you know, even that pulsation from heart to surface and heart again, even on a very physical level, it, it strengthens that for us, that knowledge of where am I, where am I, like how, how, how am I, what is signaling inside of me, what is the message, am I moving too much, is there too much force, and all of these other questions that props can really um, tune us into. And that eventually leads us to proprioception, just that ability to know where we are in space, are we doing what we think we're doing, are we where we think we are, and so forth. And this is one of these pictures where, you know, I'm using my hands to adjust or assist someone in creating boundaries, creating direction. And, you know, a lot of then what uh, we end up doing is then we have to self-adjust, you know. Um, it's amazing what the past few years have, uh, how it's challenged us, right? Because that, you know, we yeah we all want a partner to you know you know lock hands with and feel that pressure um and the the truth is also how do we need to be able to do this for ourselves you know how does that happen um there's also these days a lot more about touch touch sensitivities that's really important right we're recalibrating what it means to um uh have consent and all of these other things so it's such important conversations so we can always turn towards and the question can be like, oh, I know that 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 remember that one partner exercise we used to do, but here I am in my own space, they're in their own space. Um, you know, how 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 do we do it ourselves? Um, it's it's not not a given because, um, yeah, it's not always possible, but I I I. Uh, I wouldn't say that you can't figure it out. You can, the, the props increase our, our possibility, right? The potential to find a way to then have, gain this awareness through self-adjustment. So we brought up those, so containment and boundary and um, all of these, but they, they also help us maintain space. This is one of, you know, just one of my favorites. It's always been one of my favorites, just the block between the inner upper thighs, um, you know, that, that idea that they're, they're, you know, we work so much to move the inner thighs out to the bone in, in, the, in the inner spiral um, to, you know, to create muscle and, you know, muscle to bone action and a widening of the seat. And sometimes it's just like space saver, put the block there. You can't now, you, you know, you can't pass that, that space anymore. It's, it's, it's set up, it's there, it's maintained. Um, and, and then what, what becomes then the, the learning around that, right? What becomes uh, clearer because of it and what shifts? Um, they also, they steady us and they move us. Um, so this one might be clear, right? Maintaining space, but can you also see how it steadies? And can you also see how it would bring about the potential to move, bring about movement? And so, you know, here's one, you know, they steady us. You know, what do you what do we see when we see the the, kind of the block under the front of the shoulder? What, how is that steadying? So what is what is the kind of our visceral feeling? Have you ever done this before? Can you can you call it up because you've done it, or is it new to you? Have you ever put a uh, a block here? Can you imagine what that would allow for? And in many ways, what does it allow for, right? It allows the shoulder to move into the front plane without it meaning it's collapsed, without meaning it's rolled the shoulder, without meaning it's yanked on the neck, right? It allows the shoulder to soften and lean into the front plane with a lot of feedback, with a lot of steadiness and support. So imagine how that might allow the shoulder to get uh, new information um, instead of always pulling our shoulders back right, to be able to know where we want our shoulders in space. What is it like if they could actually move towards the front plane and, and have the support of the steadiness of a prop? You know, and props move us, you know, so here now uh, uh, the prop isn't there. 
but how does it then allow us to find our way through all these different movements that we want to find and stay and recalibrate, you know, find our way into um, a containment around the shoulder that we need, the arm bone not dropping and so forth. And it comes to a lot of then patterns. And again, I don't want to go too much into this, but this is my little kind of teaser because um, I, I will be presenting in Colorado in September. And I even um, am extremely excited because I get to teach uh, a, a, like a training, like 10 hours where we'll talk about patterning and um, how we make use of the practice for patterning and repatterning particularly. So, you know, props are so key also because um, patterns are learned through successful repetition. And when patterns are successful, um, they and uh, they are then eventually they become effective, right? And when they're effective, it's because they are there when we need them. So that uh, something that could be successful is also potentially not useful um, in the in in a certain circumstance. It might actually override something you really do need. Um, so we're there. Patterns are also need to be efficient. They need to be there when we need them. Um, and we're constantly using the practice and props are huge for this. This is what feedback offers us, right? A conscious awareness, that self-awareness so we can examine patterns and then can be repatterned. Uh, patterns can always be repatterned if they're not life affirming. Um, and so we'll play with that. So here's just my, my, my favorite um, from when I was a kid, you know, that groove gets deeper. Sometimes we need a little help. We've got each other, right? We've got our teachers. We've got um, props. We really, really do. Um, and I, I, I hope, I hope I, uh, I, uh, I convince you if you haven't. Otherwise, I have a feeling you all are on board and are just more like, give me more props, give me more props. Um, so, I'm gonna, we're gonna shift in a moment towards a short mini practice, and we could really use any and every prop, but we're, we'll stick with one to two blocks. Um, and so just while I switch cameras and things, I want to offer you a moment, you know, even just from having gone through this, does it tickle your fancy? Is there, is there something that you're working on that even just in this moment, would you go towards the end point? Would you say, oh, what would it happen if I give my hand an end point? Or what if, you know, is there anything that you would in this moment want to jot down something you're working on? Um, is there something that you can tell that you just can't kind of get around, like your awareness isn't able to bring up some pattern, you're just a little bit stuck um, and not even knowing how necessarily you're going to work with that, but even just inviting the, um, the, the question, right? So key just to invite the question, not because you expect to have the answer now or tomorrow, um, but it's, it's the way we, we start to taste again and we start to, to, um, let our practice be a place of discovery. So just a moment, if that is interesting, you know, how do you begin? Is it that you just have to go to a prop workshop and learn how everyone else uses props? No, how do you begin? This is, this is how you begin. You say, shoot, this isn't working. I wonder what might come into play. So I'm going to stop the share. Any questions in this moment also of a pause? I want to make sure we get to move. So in some ways, there was a bit of a steam rolling through. So you're suggesting that everyone has two yoga blocks, a yoga mat, and ready to practice in a yeah, if not, if not, don't, don't, um, if not, uh, if you have a block, find your way through with us. Uh, it's not going to be, you don't need a mat, um, have enough of a space, or even if you don't, you know, play along with us, imagining you did, quite honestly. It's, you know, we even props, I find visuals, right? I, I love visuals, all these pictures, these, these are things I, I just, I gather. I'm like, that reminds me of this. That helps me describe this. It's like anything that that gives us the the um, 
the, that curiosity to reflect on and to to uh, to give the feedback and explore. So even just by by watching, you're participating. Um, so the the block uh, bottom or middle height, and because hips are wide and we want sit bones on it, either way you decide to take it, you take it wide. And in virasana seat, uh, thighs are parallel, and yet you imagine from the center of your knee, almost like you're creating an a shape. So you have your feet walk out, maybe even inner heels towards the outer hips. Feel free to go higher, right? We're just beginning. See how your knees feel. You could grab an extra blanket, take it higher, see what you'd like. But just very simply, now we have a firm surface under our seat while we're here. And what I want to invite you to do is just to rock the pelvis, which means it's not chest forward, and chest back. It's not the upper body. It's the turning. Um, if you know the loops, it's almost like you're turning the crank of that loop between thigh loop, which would lead to almost a reverse pelvic loop and pelvic loop. And what you're doing then as you're moving your pelvis is you're also going to get some feedback from the block because on the bottom of your pelvis is basically like a rocking chair. There's a rim that goes from the sit bones that you find on the back, which we're familiar with in many ways because of feedback, right? They're bony points that give us feedback. But as you rock forward, you're gonna press down more towards the pubic bones. And that's the front side of that bottom rim. That's like a rocking chair. So just a little tip of the pelvis. Letting the prop which is a firmer surface, which is why I would invite this to be a block rather than a set of blankets, because we're using it particularly to feel out um, bony points, to feel out the movement that we have there, to notice it. So a few more rounds. You know, anything else if you're like, oh, no, I Oh, I've been sitting at the computer, you know, anything that you want to take beyond that, but staying with the attention, you know, noticing how your mind's eye is really making use of that because it brings up self-awareness. It's also a boundary, right? And the tailbone, right? Feel your tailbone almost reaching back and up when you're towards the pubic bones, right? I almost imagine like a cat when its tail's up. Or when you're, you find your sit bones, don't fall off the sit bones behind you, right? When we sit back into a chair, right, we're often actually off our sit bones. We're, we're, we're further back and we're, we're making use of having something to put the weight through. We use the back of the chair, right, at the back of the ribs. So don't fall off your sit bones, but when you do press down onto them, almost take your tailbone towards the back of your knees. You, you might feel as in the hamstrings fire up a little bit, your shins get a little heavier. You just have a slightly different movement. So this is even a great way to teach what those feelings are, the felt sense of thigh loop activation and that kind of reverse pelvic loop, tailbone almost up and then pelvic loop and how it feeds down the back of the leg and you'll get the little tone of the belly. All right, go ahead and come off of that. For a moment, moving your block to your side and coming to downward facing dog. And stretching out your downward facing dog. And if you don't have a mat again, if you're with, working with less space, you can also just come to stand. We're gonna walk forward in a moment. And if you're downward do dog, bend your knees a little and now notice as you pick up your seat behind you, now can you feel the reach back? So you could put weight more weight towards your sit bones as if your sit bones were gonna find the back of the wall, the wall behind you, right? Or if you bend your knees a little, you might be able to get the sit bones to pick up more, almost like you're gonna be pressing that front part of the rim towards the wall behind you. And then anywhere in between, you have that whole rim to play with. You'll have it'll start to move you, right? It'll steady you, but it will move you. And then walk to the front of the mat. And just hands to your hips. Bending your knees here. Notice we have a lot of choices. Pick sit bones up and almost press 
the seat more towards the wall behind you. And in that way, you're going to make use of the, the deep seat, right, your inner thighs. You could also start to give a little weight to your sit bones, put some of that weight down through the hamstrings, let the low belly pick up, and then go ahead and push down and come all the way up to stand. So take a block now on the floor and step one foot off the block where you have the heel is definitely on the block. The mounds of your toes are on the block, but the rest of your toe, basically the length of the toe is off the front of the block. I'm just gonna invite you to pour, reach your toes downward. I find this one really key you want to imagine almost like water, like a river was coming, right? And then off it goes the waterfall, off the edge of the block. Our toes are in shoes all the time. Here's an end point, right? This particularly in, you know, contrast with our hands that has lost a lot of that uh, sensitivity, has lost a lot of its, its movement into the world, right? Because of the boundary that we add with the shoe, the, that kind of, extra containment. So getting your toes to reach and fall off that edge. If you want, you could also give a little extra feedback, fingers underneath, just kind of pouring, giving a little bit of a lift to maybe even the middle joints to pour the toes over. And what I hope you'll start to feel is that the arch starts to lift, maybe the calves start to engage, but maybe even more so that that finding the end point, right? And in this case, not giving it a boundary, but allowing the end point to be an end point, to be a place of exchange. How that actually steadies and moves you, not in a way necessarily that you can see on the surface, but you'll feel it and switch sides. Even notice the difference as you set that foot to the floor maybe different engagement in the leg. And so same thing, the, the whole of the foot's on the floor except for the toes. And the big toe mound is so key. It's a big stabilizer, but it can also be a place where we get a little bit caught. A lot of energy can pool and drop there. And in this, you're taking that energy and you're making sure it reaches all the way to the tips of the toes as you reach them down and over the front of the block. Really extending there, breathing there. So it's also not the toes pulling in and gripping, right? You wanna invite them to lengthen and fall like water. Move down over the front of that block. Again, if you want a little bit of support, cause sometimes, right, it's more feedback. You won't even realize where the tensions are. You can even use your fingers to press or give that reach. See if you can call it the arch a little bit. Feel how it brings action up into the leg. Good. And then moving that block. Go ahead and come to the front of your mat. Just standing in Tadasana. Imagine the reach of your toes forward. Take a little moment, not a lot of movement through space but come back to the feedback of the bottom rim of the pelvis. You know, where's your tendency? Is your tendency to be more down through the back of the seat, right down through the sit bone side? Can you also find the front? Can you find that you have the whole, whole rim to play with? Stretch your arms out and up, nice deep breaths. And fold forward. And as you lengthen, step your left leg back, bring your back knee down, go ahead. If you'd like to, here's a great, you know, here's one of the ways I use a prop almost more than anything else, right? Just for the comfort of my knees. And let your front knee bend a little bit and then press your hips back and almost go behind. So have your back toes tucked and then let your hips slide a little forward and then let your hips slide a little bit back. And then grabbing your block, take it and bring it right into the very front 
but it's just the top of the thigh. It's just right here, but you're gonna drag it a little bit into your belly and then take just a little bit of a lean over. Maybe as if you're gonna bring your fingertips to the floor. So you just have this block here basically between your front ribs and your belly and just pick your back knee up off the floor. Give it a little bit of a squeeze there. Just a bit of a squeeze. If you needed another block for your hands, right? How do we often use a prop? To lengthen the length of our limb, right? That's often the strap, right? If we can't reach, we grab a strap or we lift the floor up, right? We wanna lengthen the limb. Rather than lengthen the limb, we wanna bring the earth up to us. You just give a little squeeze. You're not trying to drop your belly inside the thigh. You're, you're holding space and you're finding the hug towards the block between belly and thigh. Good, and then bring your back knee down again and switch sides. So you can keep one block in front. And we'll just start first with a little bit of hips forward and back. When you go back with those toes tucked, notice the end point, how much you can lean and use the foot there, right? It's active, it's pushing. And even just the reaching that we did from the block, help, what does that help create? Hips a little forward and a little bit back. Good, and then again, block. So it comes to the very top of the thigh. It's just on the, the quads here. And you take and you draw, you basically try to squeeze the block between belly and thigh. The closer in you get it to the hip, the better, but just wherever it fits to create that space. And part of what this is after is we want the hip flexors, we want the front of the hip engaged, but we wanna maintain space. Pick up your back knee, if that works for you. Squeeze the block. You can then be super strong, intentional, trying to squeeze the block between the thigh and the belly, but the hip crease has to maintain that space because the block is there. A few more breaths, just really feeling it, letting that imprint. Good, and back knee comes down and go ahead and release that one as well. All right, time-wise, good. Let's play with uh, the last one. So if you'd like to, another thing that's great, right? We use a lot of blankets to lift our seat. So you could grab one or two. If you don't have them, no worries. Sit on the floor and just bring one foot heel in. And we're take the heel up onto the block. So it's amazing how, right, if you imagine going from the floor up to Crown Trasana, right? It's a long distance from there to here. It's a long distance. What is it that just lifting the heel this much, it allows us to find our way through it. It will move us and steady us in a slightly different spot. So my invitation to you is just to, with your heel on there, take your hands and almost lean towards your left knee till your, uh, uh, not your left knee, whichever knee is down, till whichever heel is on the block, your front leg, that seat picks up. And then push onto that heel and move the lifted seat around a little bit. And hopefully we've warmed it up and you wanna keep now, this is now a containment. It's not the foot that's gonna move through space, right? The, the foot, it has a boundary, it's contained. So what's gonna move is the hip. And then maybe try if you think that there's a little bit more there. You could try taking it up another height. It's not even a lot. You just lean onto the lower leg. You keep your heel pushing down. And to whatever extent that means, it's gonna give that feedback that it's in the hip that you're gonna pick up and just move the hip around and then switch sides. Heel can be low. You lean towards the, the uh, bottom leg, this is quote unquote the back leg, right? That's the standing leg, the front leg, heels on the block. You lean there so you can easily pick your seat up. Heel stays, seat moves. 
So in Anasara methodology, this is what we call stabilize the periphery to move at the core. This is a movement using a, a prop. And you, you could use the floor too, right? But just notice, again, it's not that much higher. But because it's a prop, we realize, you know, the, the earth, um, we, we're used to it, right? There's a familiarity. Props also offer, right, that, that um, heightened awareness because it's something different. Shift if you want. And if you wanted to play, you could come back to each side. Right, we got here very quickly <laughs> using props. But you could come back and see what it would feel like to then first keep your heel down, right, and get the seat to anchor to then play with the lift of the foot. And to get the heel to anchor, so first seat lifts and it moves. Then when your seat anchors, then your foot moves. You do not need to be in full expression of the pose, right? But the, the invitation is like, what is the, those little shifts? How do these little, I call these teaching poses sometimes. It's like you wanna make sure a student feels that, right? Because otherwise there's no point of going on. And part of what is the that in a pose like this is how much of that movement, right? We see the foot move through the, the, the air, right? But it's not movement that needs to happen here, right? We want to be moved towards the core. We want to really know how our relationship with the outer world takes us into the light of our own body, right? It takes us into the light of the heart. And is also that way of that actually what's expressing is not just our foot. What's expressing is the deep light of the, of the, the heart. Good. All right. One more, come on to, uh, come to sit. We'll come on to our back foot. Just watch for a moment where the, the block placement is going to be. So we're gonna come to um, ankle across knee, but then we're gonna draw the foot. So this is in some ways aiming us to feel out lotus and the half lotus form. All I've done is taken the foot. It stays on top of the thigh, but I've dragged it down. The foot stays pointed. I do my best not to have the toes pull towards me where all the tension moves to the outer ankle. So even feeling that reach of the toes we played with this key. All right, so that's that setup of just this position. But over time, what you practice is that the knee starts to come away from the belly. The leg even stretches out, the leg comes down. So you could use a fist for this. What you're looking for is not the pelvis itself, but just the very top of the thigh to help lift and create some movement there, or the half wedge of the block. And it can be anywhere kind of along the outer thigh, the closer it gets towards the hip socket, the more effective it can be. So if you'd like to try this, this is just the last one, and we'll just even take a moment to rest after we finish this. Again, I'll just tell you those, those keys. As the foot draws down the front of the thigh, Keep the toes pointed, even imagine the reach off the block. So our end points stay available, sensitive. How much will that steady you? How much will it move you? How will it give you a clarity of the boundaries you need to maintain? But also, of course, the deep force of the body, the deep presence of the heart, the light-filled form. The block comes it's coming basically over time up the outer thigh because it's going to pick up, up a little bit. It's going to give you an awareness of how much the outer hip firms, how much the outer hip has to tone and lift the thigh really almost in the socket. It lifts a little bit to invite that length through the inner thigh. So try the other side. And a fist can work. A fist is um, a little bit more movable, right? The one thing about a block, I mean, I have the three quarters block, you know, the two thirds block. So, you know, it, it, uh, it doesn't allow for different heights. So you can always use your fist in there and see how that feels. But the block is, is steady, right? It's gonna maintain that space. And just in these last moments while we're here, right, I, I stuck with a block. It's something that we all have. 
but I can't tell you the number of times I've been in someone's home and it's like, oh, that chair, oh, that piece of furniture, it's perfect. Oh, that pillow you have, it's right the right height, right? The number of props are really, you just have to look around there. It's limitless. Uh -huh. And then eventually do let it go. Stretch your legs out long, roll your hips a little bit side to side. We just we used this practice to come from the periphery towards the core and reaching back out again, in and out through the lower body. Take a moment to cool your eyes to soften. And then deepen your breath. If you are laying on your mat, draw your knees into your chest. And transition up to sit. Once again, we'd love to invite you to join us in Estes Park, Colorado in September, 2023. Julia will be presenting there a 10 hour intensive as part of the four day uh, training or, or retreat weekend. So it's a Sunday through a Wednesday and 10 hours of those four days you could spend with Julia while also enjoying other classes, hiking in the beautiful Colorado Rocky Mountains. Estes Park, if you don't know, is the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. And so the planning team for Samudra Shakti, the live event, is Deb Payne, myself, Madhuri Martin, and Kim Friedman. And we'll be giving you lots more information about the event in the coming months as everything keeps firming up. We would love for you to join our watch list. You now know you can get that free 32-page, high-gloss PDF magazine quality with great content. So um, just hold your camera up on your phone and scan that code and it will turn on and say, hey, do you want to open a web page? And it's a safe web page. We created it. It's safe. And it's just a form to fill out that automatically dumps you into the watch list. And then pretty quickly, depends how quickly the servers work, but pretty quickly you will receive in your email inbox that free PDF. So thank you for joining us for Samudra Shakti Online. I am gonna hand this back to Julia and have her close us out, answering any final thoughts or responding to questions and then giving us a final farewell. Awesome, the comments are so sweet. Um, Yes, uh, uh, I, if each one of these could be could have a lot more time, right? A, a whole class around this. And this is just, we. it was simple, it was blocks. I mean, there's so many potential props to use. Um, and uh, it's it's really, the sky is the limit. There's no, there's no end to this. Um, there was a question about the width of the legs, but I'm not sure in which um, pose it was referring to. I don't know, Lauren, if you wanna unmute. Yeah, it was the one where we were sitting down, we had the left leg bent on the block and then the right foot was in and we were working with our pelvis. Yeah. We were spinning out um, and I loved it. I just didn't know the angle of the left leg. Like, mm -hmm. should it be 90 degrees on that block or how, where? Yeah, so there, I mean, I'm not sure. Left leg, uh, the two, there's two, the two legs of it, right? I think if I'm back here, you'll see me well. One leg, I mean, there's two variations. So one foot could, you could tuck it in. There's a second variation is that you actually, you would do it in the half urasana. Um, and then you'd play with this. Um, but the width of the leg also, um, this this leg, um, Kranchasana comes forward. There's variations where you start to go out, but that tends to be more towards the switch of the hand towards like a sundial. 
Um, but that also applies, right? We think it's the foot, we think it's the foot, but actually how much of it is the hip movement that's actually gonna get that on its way into, into the play. Um, I don't know if that answers. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I'm just playing with it. Um, and I, But yeah, it was helped me to see you in those poses to see where we're going with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, it was, qu it was quick. We were quick. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's, there's so much. Um, so I just want to also thank you all for, for being here and participating. Um, there, there's no end. That's, I, that's, that's why, that's why I'm here. It's like, if, if there was an end, it was like, all right, now you've got it. That's all that's possible. You know, the block, that's the props end there, you know, that I would, I would have to go do something else. Um, and so I just, yeah, thank you all. I love this. Thank you, Lisa and Midori. This is, I was here February, 2020. I mean, it was a long time ago, time at Inkaloop. It's just such a beautiful platform to get to be together. Um, join me in other places, come play. I am a huge fan of being together. Anasara yoga is um, so um, life affirming. That's just what, what came up in my um, talk about, you know, just, just to really know, know who we are at that depth. So two retreats, both on Asara, one in March, one in September. I have an online course that's starting hands, wrists, and ankles, all sorts of other things. You can catch me on my website, juliaparing.com. And I'm sure we will be together again soon. Thank you all. Thank you.